Are you guys want to get started? As uh, they said, they're cheap. They're the truck. Yeah, they're coming. Okay. You can start. Um, Brandon was looking to fill a drill date uh, a couple months ago, and we wanted to put something together to discuss the history of the fire company. Uh, number one, I think it checks that box for OSHA requirements. Um, but also, to, we're, we're recording, we want to capture a lot of our history as much as possible. Um, I am not the history of the fire company, Ira's not the history, Jim's not, we are. We all collectively are the history of the Eggertsel Hose Company. Um, as we prepare for our 110th year, uh, in another year and a half, uh, we'd like to really bundle up our, our history book, um, which my father's getting off the printer now. Um, we have a draft copy of it, we've kind of been running with that for the last 10 years, and adding to it when we can. Uh, a lot of it's going to be what we talk about tonight. Um, we do have documented history that I've, I'll read through and, and go through with, with Ira as well uh, from some of our ancestors and, and some of the things that they've written down uh, as, as well. I, I'm going to read off uh, from Elmer Ahern, past president uh, on Amherst School District Letterhead. Um, he has a history that he uh, wrote in the early 1900s as well. But we're going to talk about tonight being a history roundtable, and yes, Bob, I'm sorry, it's square. Um, we're going to talk about our beginnings, $113.13 in 13 minutes. Um, the formation of the fire company, why we were formed, uh, and, and when. Some innovations uh, we represent in this room probably every decade uh, in the last 60 years is in this room right now. Um, social, we're going to talk about the social uh, experiences of the fire company. That's why we're recording it and not recording it on live <coughs> Facebook. So we're, there may be some uh, things we talk about that may need to be edited out. Um, we're going to talk about benchmark events. Some things that we had, uh, big fires, big incidents over the years. Um, icons and legends, some of the people that have walked through our doors. Nothing? Nothing yet. Okay. Uh, and we're going to talk about the future, where we're going, uh, what, some of the things that we need from all of you, and some of the things that, that you guys are looking to contribute and, and have contributed from the fire company as well. Uh, we're going to go around the room, get a lot of your ideas, your favorite yet Eggertsville memory, your most memorable call, your least memor your favorite memory. Um, we have some props on display here, some of our turnout gear in history, everything from the Pemox to the steel cylinder MSA positive pressure at air pack to some of our sports wear to some of our protective equipment. Rick Belke has uh, an engine two display, some of the things that he's restoring for the truck um, and what's already been restored. You guys have seen the cabinet back there that has uh, a lot of our old nozzles and equipment as well, as well as this two-scale model from Don Stresky, uh, who did that, how old was he? Uh, 17. So that was, that was just, just for your information, uh, he was going to Genesee Community College and he took model making and he made that, cast the wheels, everything, made it from one sheet of plastic. At the time, uh, the guy that owned American and France offered him a thousand dollars for it. He gave it to the fire company. That's, that's right to scale from your snore. The uh, the videos or the pictures you see on the screen. Uh, that's St. Patrick's Day. Um, they are it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's just it's a raw uh, capture from our basket of fifty thousand pictures that we have in the archive. Um, and it's just going to cycle through at random uh, throughout the night, but they are all on the computer system here. Most of them have been posted online. That being said, we screened out a lot of these uh, for our public posting. 
We posted on the Eggersoul Facebook page a lot of our history. I've uh, been able to tag in a lot of people uh, with them as well. Um, so our video, our video archives is also are also abundant. Those are on the, the data system. Those are also on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Um, we have a lot of calls that are archived in there. Luckily, my dad was injured for most of the late 80s and was able to film a lot of uh, the fires and things that we had. Uh, so, and a lot of the drills are posted on there as well. We're also developing a call archive, so a lot of our audio calls uh, that we have on tape, whether it's from the fire wire from the last 10 years or so, or from um, oh, no, 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 no. the fire control. We'll put that one sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. We're posting that as well. That being said, I'll let Ira go and, and start us with the first <coughs> chapter here of our story. Uh, I don't know, because most of the stuff, a lot of the stuff, when when we published this book, uh, I years see ago, who's, we, who's new in the room? Each fire was in the scene, 50 of them. So a lot of you fellows oh, got these books. <laughs> we have a few left. So if anybody did not get one, they're more than welcome to have one. But it's got the history from the inception of all the fire companies in the town to 1996. And well, I told John, I said, we better go to the past president's association and tell them that the fire companies in the town should start putting together their history from 1996 to the present because someday they're going to have to publish a book just like this through the next chapter. The, the next chapter. So most of the stuff that I'm going to cover, with the exception of a couple of things, are in this book. I'm gonna, while you're reading the first couple chapters, I'm going to scoot over to the computer and scroll through pictures from that period. Okay. Uh, as John said, no, it doesn't need to the fire company was started. There used to be a general grocery store at the corner of Main and Everett on the southeast corner of Sauders. And that's where the fire company started. They raised $113.13 and 13 cents in 13 minutes. No, I'm not going to do this. First firehouse was a wooden structure at Main and Maynard. And the picture is out in the hallway. It shows the fire out here. And it was a wooden building. And the way the, uh, the hose carts were taken to the fires was uh, Manning's, which was at near the corner of Main and Edgar, had a dairy. And he had uh, horses that would deliver the milk. And if they needed the horse to pull the hose wagon to the fire, they used his horse. There was also one up at Maine, I think it was at Maine and Caledon, was a, a one day uh, where they had a hose cart. Uh, I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip some of the stuff because it's all in this book. Uh, the, uh, I'll just go through read a couple <coughs> sentences from Elmer Ahern. As with all great things, the universe is ours. Uh, the Eggersoul Hose Company was in its infancy just a few short years ago. Uh, with a steady nursing and plenty of hard work, we may say that the, uh, today we have the opportunity of laying the cornerstone. This was at the cornerstone of our station in 1938 when it was built, uh, of the monument to success. Let us delve into the history of our Eggersoul Hose Company uh, that we may un uncover facts uh, that have made it possible by the erecting of this beautiful new home. That was that was built in 1932. Jeff. 32, excuse me. Uh, at that time, uh, in fact, the hose cart that's out there is very similar to the one that was at the station uh, at the Main and Caledon, and also at the firehouse at uh, Main and Main. Uh, at that time, uh, there was a chief, assistant chief, and two foremen and two assistant foremen. And it was around that time that the red shirt, you have a white belt? In the trophy case of the atrium. Oh, OK. <coughs> uh, and the, uh, they wore a red shirt, a black tie, and a white wide belt and black pants. Uh, see, in 1940, 
was when we switched to the uniform we have today with a few modifications over the years, especially for the chief officers and the table officers and your life membership stripes on the sleeve. Uh, let's see. Talk about the development of the West End. The Caledine District uh, station was built. That was the West End. Uh, people were aroused to the act that they needed fire protection. There were a few meetings called. Uh, Tom Cooper drew a place of business at Maine and Bailey to decide the quickest and best secure way to secure fire protection. Um, then the project came to a standstill until John Chasson's uh, barns were. Yeah, um, there was a lot of guys that served in the armed forces, and that goes back to the wrong. Edward Scholes, he was killed in the First World War, and Fritzy Brunner, he lived on Hyde Park, he lived right behind where my parents lived on Chasson. And boy, you talk about a wild, <coughs> he was as wild as they could be. But he was killed in Belgium. He was, uh, he was a Airborne uh, Ranger in the Second World War. And of course, there's been an awful lot of fellows here, in, in fact, in this room, that have served in Korea, Nam, Desert Storm. Let's see. Talk about the alarm system, Chief. I didn't. The company's alarm system consisted of an iron railroad rim struck by a sledgehammer. It was mounted next to the firehouse. Uh, from the inception of the fire company, they, we also had an active ladies auxiliary uh, until uh, Prohibition. And uh, they contributed to uh, picnics and social affairs immensely. However, with Prohibition caused a rift between the host company and the auxiliary. The ladies were dry and the men were wet. So that ended the ladies <laughs> auxiliary. <laughs> you got anything to say as long as we're going? You're more than welcome to it. <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. I'm, I'm skipping a lot of this stuff. Like I say, a lot of it's in this book here. Our, se our second chief was Harry Beeling, Ira's grandfather. And that's who's out in the hall. Um, he was lieutenant of the Buffalo Fire Department, known for firefighting techniques. He was also president of the New York State, Western New York Firemen's Association. Um, statue sat at the Erie County Fair probably till the late 90s, until we got it here uh, when the fireman's building was in disrepair. And it's been a made stay at our station ever since. Um, Can I mention the FWD? First motorized apparatus, thanks Brian. This is the, this is the, the, the main copy of the book, so we were kind of cuddling along while I printed. 1924, our first motorized piece of fire apparatus was built. It cost $10,000 at the time, compared to what the, the one sitting out there. I think the last pumpers we bought, I don't know, is there any one of the commissioners here? They're opening bids for a pumper. Oh. No. <laughs> 660, 640, $750,000 each was no. Wow. Yeah. Did you three was six something. Yeah. yeah. Lander was the FWD bought? 1924. 1924. Ten thousand. Right. Now that that wasn't new. That wasn't a new piece of equipment either. Nineteen twenty, we built a homemade Buick pumper. Um, homemade pumper, and it was also served as a chief's car. We had a nineteen twenty eight Hudson that was equipped with storage for bringing uh, uh, rehab from Canada. That, that I gotta tell you about because my grandfather. That was my grandfather's car, and they used to go over to Fort Erie. And there was room in that to bring booze back to the firehouse. <laughs> so that's why they had the big cuts in the <laughs> city. <laughs> hey, John, I'm passing a couple pictures around for history. Cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Wally, you're in. I got some for you here. The, uh, oh, no. Exact association. Oh, no. Guys are trying to get it on tape, too, by the way. They, uh, they owned 3826 Main Street. And the building. The building. And, uh, in fact, yep. members of the fire company that formed the exempt association all mm -hmm. 
second mortgage is out on their home to pay for the building. And there was quite quite a bit of articles in the paper when the building was sold to the district uh, about the 40 feet. Remember? Yeah. Your, your dad and your grandfather were members. Yeah. My father was a member. My father-in-law was a member. To build the to build station one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was the exempt association. That was the exempt association. Yeah. Okay. We got a chapter in the book uh, just to bounce back and forth. We talked about the ladies auxiliary, the exempt firemen's association. Uh, if you look in your bylaw book, you'll see that badge. There'll be a badge in there from the exempt association and some of the older books. Um, Corpora it was a separate corporation that was founded. They associated with per people of the uh, village of Eggertsville. Um, they served as volunteer firemen in the village, and they, uh, this is directly from their bylaw book, uh, entitled to exemption of services from jurors at the time, mil uh, militia duty, <laughs> and those who received certificate would get uh, evidence of membership. Uh, they'd have relief for dis uh, disabled, exempt firemen, uh, indigent firemen, Many of the things that our Benevolent Association has expanded to today started with the roots of our exempt association. Uh, to, we, in our book that we're going to publish down the line here, we have the original members from the incorporated certificate as well as the original uh, officers of the association. George Lipke was the first president. Uh, they developed a seal over the years. The association was active and participated in firematic organizations around western New York. Um, the association was the first recipient of the 2% fund. It also took title of real property of the Eggersville Host Company in 1944. That's what I was saying. The title was transferred to a holding corporation named 3826 Incorporated uh, in 1959. The Eggersville Host Company Volunteer Firemen's Benevolent Association ceased to be active in 1968, although the charter still exists to this day. Then Benevolent came in in 1960. Uh, if you want, before we get in the 60s, we'll... I got, I got. Go ahead. I gotta tell you about the club. Some of you guys remember the basement of the firehouse that made and made it. That was that was a very nice restaurant. They had <coughs> three bartenders, a greeter and meter, they had six waitresses and a full staff in the kitchen. And uh, Friday nights was fish fry nights. Saturday nights they had a, a three piece orchestra. In fact, one of the members of the fire company, Ray Toll, and his his orchestra. And uh, they used to have dancing, and uh, if anybody was celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, there was either a little cake or flowers. And then Sunday night after dinner, there was a sing-along for two hours from 7 to 9. And uh, it cost you, anybody could join, and they had people from all over the world that were members. It cost you a dollar, you'd get a card, and you'd get a key to get in downstairs. And uh, it was just a great place. I'll just go into detail on the club. You guys see the sign that's next door? That was actually found underneath the plastic sign on Main Street before we moved and restored when we moved. Uh, be it began in the original building, as Ira was saying, members of the host company, their friends and supporters. The Eggersville Host Club held many parties throughout the year beginning on New Year's Eve, and then parties on Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, uh, Halloween, and Christmas. These affairs were enjoyable, generated uh, additional revenue for the host company. Uh, food, beverages, and games were available. Mr. Mike, uh, Mike Fix was the steward, later Fred Kemp, Willie Robinson was the cook, and Charlie Krieger Sr. Uh, was the bartender. We have a picture of that next door underneath the sign as well. Um, after the new fire station was opened in 1932, the club was established. Leonard Lewitt was hired as the steward, uh, and formal dinners were served. Festivities, like Ira said, include dancing on Saturday nights, famous fish fry. Meals at the Hose Club were terrific. Joe Braun, Jim's father, your dad? Joe Braun, Jack Woodford, Harry, uh, Harry Griffin yeah. was there. Um, yeah, he, yeah, he, was he was a waiter. That was my father-in-law. And off the end of the bar, if you're looking at the bar, there was a little room. And it was all slot machines. And he used to have a little table. And he'd sit in there Friday and Saturday night and just make change because there was a line standing to play the slot machines. But they had nickel, diamond, quarter. 
you, if you look next door, on the other side of the wall, there's a message from the original club that we found on, on eBay about 10 years ago, at least 10 years ago now. Um, a specialty was uh, Willie Robinson's Welsh Rare, Rare Bit. Catering parties also brought in additional revenue for the fire company. Parties at Christmas time were unforgettable. During parade season, firemen and families throughout the region and nearby Canada would end up at Eggersville. The Eggersville Host Club had a membership of more than 3,200 people at $1 uh, key charge per person per year. Each member had the key to the club room. The host company uh, took night duty book and kept it behind the bar. Firemen had to sign their names to report for duty. Fire commissioners and chiefs for the Buffalo Fire Department were steady customers, as many were business and professional clientele as well. Uh, 1952, there was a crackdown on gambling, uh, and slot machines were removed. Uh, the slot machine that we have next door as well was recovered from uh, one of our uh, deceased members' widows uh, of long ago as well. Uh, this was a severe blow to the revenue. Print on the wall behind the machines was the following sign that we have replicated next door today. If you win, smile. If you lose, smile. It's for the building fund. Uh, there were folding doors, as I mentioned, in front of the machine. And those were, if you guys remember Main Street, it was where the trophy cases were uh, before we moved. Uh, they were, the wall was there uh, to conceal them in case of a raid or inspection. Uh, for anyone that remembers 1995 layout, uh, when we departed to 3826 Main, it was where the trophy case was standing. There, that's info on the club, and we have some pictures as well uh, when you look in our history book. I'll email everybody a PDF copy of this also, but we are once again working on getting it published also. Just to, just to kick back, Ira. 1930s? Yeah, through 32. Yeah. 32, uh, we formed the first American Red Cross emergency station uh, in this part of the county. And we had a 1932 V-12 Cadillac touring sedan that they cut the top off of it and made it so there was seats in the back. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Billy Bellinson gave it to some guy, some contractor, for a load of flagstone for his driveway at his house on Crosby. The Cadillac disappeared. I went all over the county for it. I couldn't find it. And Billy never got the flagstone. The only thing he had was the hood order. And boy, that was some machine. They, they rolled it in 1948 on Lewisport Highway down across from where UV is now, doing 105 miles an hour. We used to run calls from Wendellville, um, the Broadway to Chickawaga, Clarence to the east, as we remember, <coughs> in the early 1900s, Clarence Center was founded also in 1908, so it gives you a little bit of a picture of where the fire companies were in the region at the time. One of our hose carts actually went to the Sheridan Park Fire Company to start them. The other hose cart went to Ucrest to start those fire companies. Uh, one of them was chopped up and put into a bonfire, I guess. Um, but that's kind of how we matriculated over the years. We answered uh, calls in the touring sedan. It was built by members. We also had a competition team at the time to demonstrate our excellent first aid skills. And that uh, functioned through the early 40s. Prominent members uh, through the well, kicked back there in the 30s. Elmer Ahern was president from 1935 to 1952. And he was also president of FASNI. You kick back on the 30s, one of the things I wanted to note on the 1930s, because we're excited to uh, have our 37 Mac fully restored, which we have the picture. If you guys don't look around on the walls on a regular basis, I'll try to point some things out that, that we've changed over the years. The 37 Mac at the time of delivery pictures over there, along with the original specs and pump test. Um, the restoration of Engine 2. Um, some of the notes we've been keeping over the last few years that's kind of been my silence part on the committee has been to invigorate the story past of the truck. Uh, the truck was in service, uh, the 37 Mac from 1937 until 1977. It was the first new truck that the Eggers Hose Company ever built uh, and ever purchased. Um, it pumped at some of our town's most historic fires, like Mean Guys, both times, uh, Glen Park Casino, and, and we drafted from the Glen as well. It was the last open cab apparatus in the Eggers Oils Company. So restoration, like I said, is going to be a great story. Uh, become a living legend in the fire company uh, that many of us cannot. Hey, John. 
Yes. How many um, open apparatus did we have? Just the Cadillac and the FWD and the Mac. Yeah, the yeah. FWD too. So three. Yeah. Yeah, three. Uh, it, the truck was originally owned by the hose company as well, um, and it never left the Eckersall family. Do, do, uh, uh, what did the district do? In the early fifties, when we talk about the formation of the district, we'll go into that. Uh, icons, talk about some icons, El Yankee. Uh, let me just flip through the book here. This book started uh, 1995. Uh, the, the continuation of this. Uh, we, had, we had a lot of documented history of the fire company, whether it was handwritten or whether it was out of the, uh, out of the book that we finally published with the town chiefs, past chiefs. Um, many of the stories, Billy would give me one page at a time and I would type them in. Um, and that's where I'm flipping through back and forth. We talked about the ladies auxiliary, we talked about the, uh, we're going to history of the fire company one more time, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Shoot, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'm looking up. <coughs> John mentioned Del Marie He was uh, he was president of the fire company. He was also president of the family. And he was president of the family. And it was in Rochester. And it was the first year I attended the convention. You talked about being one around. He really do it to everybody. He was just the greatest man. He was. He had his home over here in the golf course. He was in charge of the golf course. And he went, his home was there. But he was just a great man. Uh, Albert Yankee. He wasn't even in the district, really. No, he wasn't. You could see Russia from there. Who's to say that? No. Didn't matter. What year is that? What year is what? Uh, 32? Uh, doesn't no. say. Up at the that's, top. That's, that's from uh, <laughs> 1932. From that right. 32, that's our district map in the yeah. development. You could see Russia from there. Uh, now Yankee was chief from 40 to, to uh, 1950. He was, was also president of no. New York State Fire Chiefs. He took us through World War II. Yeah, Red Blackburn was chief after that, and uh, he was president and was also president of New York State Fire That's really hard. Billy was Billy was chief from '60 to '77. Guys, the fire commissioner for many years, and he was he was a, just the best teacher that could any be for anybody who wanted to aspire to be chief of this fire company. I put 13 years under Billy, and I, I learned I learned a hell of a lot. Billy was 1957 Fireman of the Year for Fasny, awarded for two separate rescues from burning buildings during that year. Eddie, Eddie Garino, uh, he was the only fireman in this fire company to lose their life in the line of duty. He, he succumbed in uh, uh, Westfield, just, West just field. down from where right next Frederick right. Yeah, we, uh, we recently put a picture of that fire on underneath his deceased uh, line of duty flag. Um, one of the one of the holy grail items that we're looking for in our archives is a picture of Ed Garino that's in decent shape, so not one of them, but he's uh, having fun with it. In 1960, Mike Patola and Eric Gibson were on it. 92. 1990s. 90, or 1990s. Fireman of the Year for a rescue. Uh, they got the New York State Volunteer Fireman Association. Uh, in 92, Peter, what happened in 92? I don't know, Ira, what happened in 92? You and Steve Hodges. Where's Steve? Steve here? The Allenhurst. Peter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I remember when we had a lot of long um, long um, long um, long um, long 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 Roger Lally and I and we pulled the second engine in into the alley, in Allenhurst Alley. There were no hydrants. We couldn't get any water. And North Bailey finally got, we, the lady was standing on the window by the screen, but we got her down. And then she said, my son's in there, get my son. So we couldn't get back in because the flames were blowing out of the garage. If anybody knows how the alley is in Allenhurst, the apartment is actually above the garage. The flames were blowing out and going right up to the, the window. So we couldn't put a ladder up, it would have been right in the fire. We had no water, we couldn't do anything. So finally when North Bailey got there, we got in, we got the little boy out. He didn't make it. And then they found the father in there too, he didn't make it. I guess they found him in the bathtub. And then what made it even more tragic is Dave Baldoff knew the family. The guy was a friend of his. So it was a, it was a very tragic fire. Very hard to take. In fact, North Bailey finally laid us a line of cake in the boulevard. All the way down the boulevard and back around and then back down to us. Uh, the arson was accidentally set at the wrong part. It was, right. It was, a, it was a black guy who was pissed off at somebody else. It was a slight green game, wasn't and he, I don't remember. It might yeah. have had yeah. something to do with it. Off. Yeah. He got slight green. He got yeah. off. But he threw the Molotov cocktail in the wrong garage. Yeah, okay. Then we did a benefit for the little girl. Left in the front and left in the back is different. In 2008, uh, I was honored by the New York State Senate. I volunteered very Award for the value award. One of them was only 28 of us in New York State. Uh, we also served, the firehouse up on Main Street also served as uh, a meeting house for all the religious groups in our community at the time. Okay. Um, Monsignor Tolan celebrated the first Catholic Mass in the old wooden firehouse. In the early 50s, St. Paul's Lutheran Church had Sunday school after the fire in the church, and also the first Jewish service in the town of Anderson was held there. Anything else? Yeah, uh, changes made. Uh, We'll talk about modernization, pagers, portable radios. I'm going to go through a kind of a tick, ticker tape here as well uh, of where, we, where we've where we been. Uh, we talked about some of our icons. Chief Joe Red Blackburn, President of New York State Fire Chiefs. You had him on there too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 1963 to 64. He's the only member to be chief of the fire company, president, and fire commissioner. Yeah. Um, the only thing I got, I got to stick one thing in about Red. He was a short guy, about the size of Doc. A little, little stocky. Right? Stock here. Okay. But let me, let me tell you one thing. If you didn't pack two and a half inch hose square at the end of the truck, you had to take it all back off, every line, and repack, and you get up. And the other thing was. That when it came time to learn how to drive the trucks, if you couldn't get drafts the first time, you got a size seven and a half right between your cheeks. And I don't mean these cheeks. No, he, he was quite a guy, boy. Chief Dave Winzig, uh, president of the Erie County Association of Fire Chiefs, 66 and six, or 96 and 97. Um, Past uh, our vice president uh, at the time, Bill Boulay, president of the Amherst Fire Council. During the 1930s, um, this just takes you down some of the timeline items that we have. Um, we were active, the Acres Oils Company had been active in many organizations over the years as we talk about. Uh, we take part in a lot of different associations and activities. 1911, we joined the Western New York Volunteer Firemen's Association, Chief Bedker was a member of the New York State Association of Fire Chiefs and the uh, International Association of Chiefs. He was honored as the oldest chief 
by the International Association of Fire Chiefs in 1925. Harry Veeling was president of Western New York Volunteer Firemen's Association uh, in 1929 and passed away in office. Gene Braun, uh, his record was outstanding. He joined Eggertsville in 1920 along with his four brothers and rapidly climbed the ladder to president of the Eggertsville Hose Company from 1925 to 1935. He was the founder of, and first president of the following organizations. <coughs> Eggertsville Fire Council, 1929 to 1935. Erie County, Volunteer Erie County Firemen's Association, 1930 to 1935. Second vice president of FASNI from 1932 to 1933. First Vice President of FASNI, 34 to 35, and FASNI President, uh, 60, 36 to 37. And he served as Secretary of FASNI for, for an astounding 1944 to 1984. Director and Trustee of the Buffalo Exempt Fire Association and founder of many fire companies. He was co-founder of the National Fi uh, Fire Council. Eggersville President, just butt in if I'm leaving anything out or need to touch anything. Uh, You're doing good. Past president we talked about a little bit earlier is Elmer Ahern, 1935 to 1953, president of the Amherst Fire Council, 1940 and 1957, president of Western New York Volunteer Firemen's Association, director of FASNI for 20 more years. 1932, um, the Eggerts Oils Company joined the Southwestern Volunteer Firemen's Association. Uh, Fire Commissioner Albert Fleck was president for, uh, of the New York State Association of Fire Districts. We'll talk about the district formation in a moment. Uh, Chief Al Yankee was president of New York State Chiefs, 1948-49, as was Chief Joe Blackburn. Uh, during the 30s, the 30s, uh, the host company entered numerous first aid competitions we talked about, from Fort Erie to Welland to Dunville. Most recent honors, we were involved in uh, Western New York Volunteer Firemen's Association uh, in 1998, Ricky and Dunkirk, and uh, whatever. We talked about the 1998 Dunkirk Convention. Let me in? Um, let me that, in. Known as let me in. Um, many members have served currently uh, on committees of the organizations. Many stories and tales can be told uh, from the conventions and gatherings over the years. In the 30s, uh, prior to the forming of the Armor Fire Company, the Eggerts Hose Company sent truck crews to the Erie County Fair during Fair Week for fire and first aids. Um, different associations, we listed them, uh, tons of them. Uh, from fire district officers, from FASNI, um, Firemen's Home on the Hudson uh, uh, memberships. Um, bounce back as well. Talk about Eggertsville sports teams. Through the ages, the Eggertsville Company has been